Yes, so sorry if these videos are all out of order or I'm in different areas or something, but yes, just gotta do this real quick before I head out. And yes, I will be doing a draft thing. I know it's within the next few days, but that should be coming out soon as well. So to start off this video, Joey Bosa got his fifth year picked up on his rookie deal by the Chargers, which means he'll be there past the 2020 season, which is good, but knowing him, he might hold out like how he did even to begin signing that rookie deal. It's just gonna suck if he does, but hopefully he does produce some really good football in that meantime, but we'll just have to wait and see. Then Porter Gustin the other day, the NFL flagged him because he, I guess he was using some performance enhancing drugs, which really turned out to be Adderall, but Apparently, according to them, Adderall could be used not only to help you as far as recovering time if you're injured or not being able to be injured, but being able to focus a lot better as well. So it gives you like that type of benefit, which is why it's banned in most sports. But I believe he was just only taking it because the doctor allowed him to for his injury purposes as he's had the past couple years. But then again, who knows what's going to happen with his draft stock later in the week and, and if it's going to affect him, if he's going to end up being picked up later. I like him a lot. I prefer if, if he were to land with the Chargers, they'd pick him up later in the draft, but not early up in the draft. So just got to wait and see. Good luck to him. Then two Duke players that are older guys, Javin Delorier and Marquise Bolden. They're both juniors, but they're going to test out the, what they're worth in the NBA during the combine and then if they think they're gonna benefit by leaving early then they'll leave but if not they'll end up coming back I just don't think they should because it's pretty overpacked yes it's good to have senior leadership at Duke but they're they're not really the two of the best guys they even they didn't have much leadership in my opinion this year anyways but just have to wait and see then Jason Kidd did interview the other day for the Lakers job. Uh, it's a long time coming, kind of obvious. He was a name I put out there a whole long while ago. Don't know if he's probably the right fit. I still kind of prefer Monty Williams, but he look, Monty Williams looks like he's being pursued by the Phoenix Suns, which will be interesting as well once that interview takes place. But just have to wait, look how things are gonna shape up and see what the Lakers are gonna freaking do with their head coaching search. some other news so there is a thing going around that some reporters believe Reggie Bush is his, his ban basically that the NCAA put on him should be taken away because just recently some type of sports agent or type of bookie kind of player was paying guys to in order to stay in school from like 2000 2014 and schools like Alabama Michigan uh, you know, places like that, top quality schools were get, having this stuff done. And it doesn't seem like they're even gonna get that much of a punishment. I know in the, when Chris Webber, when he was coming out, uh, like around the, in the 80s in Michigan, he did accept money from a booster and that was only a 10 year ban and he's allowed to go back. He just doesn't really feel like going back. But I know Reggie Bush would love to still be a part of USC in any, special way, especially since he won the Heisman, but they still even have that taken away from USC and a lot of the wins, but I think they should finally put a number on it as far as the amount of number of banned years instead of just an indefinite ban, in my opinion. That's what everybody else seems to be saying, but I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully it can work out for him. I know Matt Leinert's pushing for that as well. Then Luke Walton, he, Supposedly, according to reports, had a chance to stay with the Lakers even after Magic Johnson left, but decided to leave to go to Sacramento. But some other news came out earlier this week too that 
he did try to force himself onto a, a woman reporter, but it was during his time while he was an assistant with Golden State. And the Lakers have said this week that they were, weren't aware of it at all, even the whole entire time he was there. And of course, the woman finally came out and she did, she said she finally came out because she was just scared and about the power he had and all this stuff and didn't know what to do. And she's not filing a federal or not like a federal, but like a, she's filing like a civil lawsuit. So it's not like something he's gonna be put in jail for, but he is gonna, I guess she just wants the news out so she could finally move on and get it over with and whatever happens in court happens, but he's not like he's gonna face any jail time, but luckily the Kings have to deal with that now and not the Lakers. So that's the only positive thing. And there's a look at a lot of those Duke players now in Duke Jersey, so that's gonna be cool to see next season coming up. Then they're saying that the Chargers are the front runners to land Josh Rosen, the quarterback from Arizona, in a trade, but I don't know, it doesn't really look like it's an option happening because Chargers rarely trade or do anything when it comes to the draft or around it. And they're saying that Phillip Rivers is gonna end up staying a while, which I don't think is the correct decision because I think it's funny if he, ended up not being with the Chargers and say if he got traded or tried to go play somewhere else, he's either not gonna play there very long or he's not gonna be as productive in my opinion. So I think he's just holding on to the, whatever this is that the Chargers are allowing him to, but that's just what the NFL does sometimes with their veteran quarterbacks, what they always do. And they're asking if, since Rob Polinka has so many strengths when it comes to when he was a agent, especially Kobe's agent, that he should utilize that more as his position as general manager with the Lakers. But as even Magic Johnson has said before, other reports came out that even other owners or GMs didn't even want to talk to Palinka even over the phone whenever he called about it. They would always go through Magic or somebody else. I just don't think it's been a, an experiment that's worked in my opinion. Yeah, I just think that the president that they bring in is probably gonna end up firing him. That's why they haven't done that search yet. They're only gonna get the coach that Palinka wants and then that's just gonna be a whole another big BS story that's gonna end up coming out where maybe that coach probably gets fired too, as I mentioned before, but let's move on. football news they said that the offense is really not going to have that much trouble especially this season coming up I think that's true just going to see how consistently the defense can step up the type of pretty much young guys that they have all around and the offense yes they're pretty young as well but the receivers and offensive line should help out and it should balance itself out where they're they are productive but just my opinion and then also a surprising movie or Hollywood slash basketball thing where Adam McKay, the well famous, more famous for like doing Anchorman and Step Brothers, a director, but he's more of a partner with Will Ferrell, which he's actually not anymore. But he did recently do like Vice and The Big Short, some more popular movies that the Academy likes. And he's gonna be working with HBO or Showtime. I couldn't remember which one. It's about a show of, maybe that's what it was. And he's gonna work with HBO about a book called Showtime about the 80s Lakers. I'm pretty sure Magic Johnson is involved in that story as well. Pat Riley, James Worthy, Kareem, all those guys. So it could be very interesting to see what they do, whether it's a show or maybe it's a documentary. You never know, go well deep into that story. I know, I think it's HBO or maybe ESPN is doing like a huge, long thing about the Chicago Bulls when Michael Jordan was there. So that's gonna be very interesting. It's taking more than a year to even put together. So that'll be cool to look at whenever it does come out. And they're wondering if, like how I mentioned before in the video, if the Chargers would trade out of that 28th pick. 
I think so, because if you move back, say, into early second round, you could pick up a pick not that far away in the same second round to the third round, maybe even the fourth, but then also a later pick, so fifth, sixth, or seventh as well. You could pick up two more picks. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I think you can, especially if a guy you're targeting isn't there anymore. I'll get into that whenever my other video comes out about the draft. It should definitely be out before Thursday when the draft is official. And they did like a final mock draft for ESPN saying that the Chargers would take a defensive tackle, Dexter Lawrence, from Clemson with that 28th pick. But in my opinion, I don't really like him. I prefer Christian Wilkins, and plus Dexter Lawrence was uh, suspended for the last two games of his college career because of that PED use as well. So I just wouldn't want him to get caught up and have taken some other type of substances that are banned. And then who knows if he's not even going to be stronger enough or whatever that benefited him before while he was taking it secretly. And he's probably not going to be the same type of player that he was. But that's just my opinion. And yeah, like I mentioned, those draft picks. So right now they have all seven, one in each round. And they're about 30, almost 30 to 40 uh, numbers away from one another. So that's why I kind of think they should trade around to either try to get something two picks close enough or picks more picks later because this is a very deep draft in my opinion you get so many positions filled up on either side of the ball and there's a lot of great guys out there just think that's what you should do build through the draft because you already have a solid team already that you've already done building through the draft but you definitely need more players in my opinion so thanks for watching people like and subscribe comment down below let me know what y'all think I'll definitely have that uh, draft video up as soon as I can, but hopefully you'll like that. A bit more talky, but I'll try to add some more newer stuff in there to make it more enjoyable than last year's. But like I said, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.